Okay, we're going to continue with the Asheville Bulldogs today and Coach uh, Shea Monroe. Coach, I believe this is year number three. Yes, sir. For the Bulldogs. So if you'd let the players introduce themselves or you introduce them in their position and then make some uh, comments about uh, what's been going on in the summer for your Bulldogs as you get ready for the season. Okay, uh, to my right is uh, Layden Olson. He's a senior. Uh, this will be Layden's third year starting for us. We recently just moved him to the uh, fullback position. So really excited about what he brings there. Uh, to my immediate right is Grayson Simpson. Grayson is uh, starting safety for us, and uh, he's actually our starting kicker. Um, you know, he's a, a young man that works tremendously hard at his craft and what he does. To my farthest left is Eli Reeves. Eli plays outside linebacker and wing back for us. And uh, Eli's had a, a really good two years for us. And to my immediate left is Ashton Mostella. Ashton plays the interior defensive line, and, and he'll also dabble at the uh, fullback position for us as well. But uh, as far as the summer goes, it's been a good summer. You know, the young men have been working hard. Um, you know, we got a big group this year, big class of seniors. we got 20 on the team. So, you know, really excited to see what the season holds for us in 2022. Uh, Coach, the last couple of years you've been there, we said uh, the third year. You went from five and five to six and four last year. You've seen improvement, and I know that's what you're planning for this year. You said you had a great group of seniors coming back, 20. Talk about how many starters on offense and defense for us. Uh, we were returning eight starters on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, I feel like the, the strength of this football team is definitely going to be in the offense and defensive fronts. Um, you know, our offensive line, we've got four or five returning and, and multiple three- and four-year starters at those positions. And then our defensive line, we're fortunate enough to return all three starters, and, and all three of them, ironically, are three-year starters. Um, you know, our linebacking core is um, all made up of, you know, two- and three-year starters. You know, we need to find a little bit more experience in the secondary, but, you know, Grayson's coming back for his second year starting in the secondary, along with Hunter Pyle, who will be a three-year starter for us at corner. So, you know, look, I mean, there's no secret what we're trying to do offensively. You know, we're going to try and run the football, control the clock. Um, you know, we, the defense is going to have to carry us, especially early in the season. A coach, as we talked about, it's, we've seen an improvement from year one to year two. We're going into year three, and it's been, I think, back in the early 2000s since uh, Asheville has been to the playoffs, and I know that's one of the goals. Speak on that yourself and let these guys individually speak on the goals for this team this year. Yeah, I mean, I think we just need to focus on it one game at a time. You know, it has been a long time since Asheville's made the playoffs. But, you know, I, I see a group of young men that have, have worked really hard. They've paid their dues. You know, that, just because you paid your dues doesn't mean you're going to make the playoffs. I mean, obviously, the ball's got to bounce your way. There's got to be some luck involved. And, you know, for us, and, and, I mean, I think they would agree, you know, programs start turning the corner. When they win a game, they're not supposed to win. Okay? You look at it on paper and you say, well, you know, Asheville beat so-and-so, well, they're not supposed to beat them, you know, and the last two years, you know, obviously good years for us, but, you know, it's, it came down to one game, and in that one game, we didn't make enough plays, you know, so I just, I think this year's team, we just got to be ready for that moment, you know, we got to be ready to capture that moment, so, you know, as far as a team goal goes, obviously to make the playoffs would be, you know, number one, you know, having a winning season is obviously a, another big one, um, you know, as far as, you know, individual goals, you know, for me as a coach, you know, the way I do it, the way I think about these guys individually, okay, I'm not, I'm not concerned with their statistics, okay, all right. I'm concerned with capturing these guys' hearts because that's my job because I, I love these guys, all right. I mean, I've been with them for five years, all right. This, these guys were eighth graders when I came there as an assistant coach, and they're, and they're fa fantastic young men, and that's the kind of stuff I worry about. Um, you know, as far as their individual goals, they can they can tell you about those guys. I mean, I think everybody knows our goal is to make the playoffs. I mean, it's been a long time since I has done that. So I think, especially for us seniors, being able to go out and say we were the class that were that was able to lift us into the playoffs, I think that's our biggest goal overall. I agree. I think that's definitely one of our biggest goals, but I, I believe that we just need to take it one game at a time. We need to focus on the next game, focus on the next game, and just try to win our next game. That's, that's what we need to do. We just need to stay focused at practice for the next game coming up. 
I agree with him. We just need a re uh, really great winning season, make it to the playoffs, trying to win the playoffs. Yeah, I agree with the other guys. I just want to have a better team than we did last year. And our long-term goal is all to make it to the playoffs. But as long as we just take it one game at a time and do better than we were last year and play as a team, I think we'll do just fine. Uh, Coach, a program uh, struggled, to put it mildly, before you, uh, for a while before you got there. Obviously, last year was your first winning season in 16 years. Um, and one of the first things you said a couple of years when you took over as head coach is changing the mindset of not um, – when, when one thing goes wrong, you know, you're expecting to lose. You're like, wait for the other shoe to drop. Uh, obviously, it looks like that's changed, obviously, from the last couple of teams you had. Talk about how gratifying that is to see the progression uh, from uh, uh, kind of accepting losing to, uh, you know, expecting – expecting to win you know and I mean don't don't give me too much credit in that deal either okay you know I got a, a fantastic group of assistant coaches who you know the 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 vision was the same amongst all of our coaches and you know sometimes guys you know as coaches you just hit it at the right time okay sometimes you get a you know a good group of kids come through and and you just hit it at the right time as far as talent and as far as work ethic and, and that sort of thing okay so a lot of the I mean a lot of this credit deserved it goes to these guys, you know, but as far as, I mean, just being consistent, I think that's the, the biggest thing is being consistent. You know, today we did picture day. I hate picture day. I hate it, okay? Y'all picked a great day to do media day. You know, I'm not my normal self today because I hate picture day, and they know I hate picture day, and they know this is one of the only times of the year where I'm in a bad mood, okay? So, um, you know, I think the key, Chris, to answer your question, is just being consistent. You know, try and be myself every day. And that's the hardest thing to do in life is just be consistent. All right. Um, I've got a question for Mr. Grayson right here. Um, somebody told me, a little bird told me, that you went to the Coles kicking camp here recently and you were rated in the top 100 out of 900 kickers. Talk to us a little bit about that experience. Then i got a question for, for the players as well. Okay. Yes, uh, this past weekend I went to the Coles kicking camp and – I would say I did pretty decent. I did, I did pretty well. Um, we don't have full results yet from the camp. We don't have full what my sessions were, how well I did. But I know I did rather well, and I think I competed. I just think it was fun. That's pretty awesome, man. And for the players, all you guys are seniors, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, as a senior, what do you feel like individually that you need to do to get you guys to the next level? Level Because it seems like everybody's goal is to make the playoffs. So what do you have to do as a senior um, to make sure you guys reach that level, reach that goal? I mean, I think our number one job as seniors is not only to be good at our positions and what we do, but also to help these younger kids be able to do it just as well, if not better, than we can. So I think in, if we want to push ourselves over the hump, we got to have people ready in case anybody goes down, anybody needs a sub. We just need to be ready in all stages to be able to have extra people ready. I agree with that. And also we should have great accountability and be leaders of our team. You know, we've been together for a long time, so I think we have a lot of team chemistry. I think it's easy for us to get each other motivated. I just think we need to hold each other accountable, make sure everybody's doing their job. I agree. I believe we want our program to continue to grow and continue to develop and get better. And I think that as long as we do our best, then we, we can show and encourage the younger players to do just as well or better than we can. You know, I think that this younger group of kids can really do well once we're gone. And I think that's one of our main goals. All right, Coach, um, from a personnel standpoint and from a scheme standpoint, what are some of the strengths of this team, some of the things you're looking forward to as far as the things that you can rely on, and then some of the things you want to be able to maybe push a little bit forward this year? Right, and, you know, that's kind of the way – the way our team's built, um, if you've never seen us play, we got a really, really big offensive line. Um, it's, it's, you know, I don't know. I, I've never really averaged them out as far as weight goes, but it's a lot, um, you know. 
And uh, we're just trying to play to our strengths. You know, we got a 240-pound running back named Jalen Williams. He was a thousand-yard back last year. Um, you know, he had a really good season as a junior for us. And and um, you know, we just try to play the strengths of our football team. You know, and and maybe we're not as as, as you know, and I'll just say it as it is. We're maybe not as athletic as some of the teams we play. So we're going to play to our strengths. We're going to control the clock. You know, try and run the football effectively, and you know, take play action pass and, and try and take the top off the defense. Okay, defensively, you know, we want to stop the run first and foremost. I mean, in, in football, if you can make a team one dimensional, you know, you're going to have a pretty good chance to be successful. So, I mean, defensively, you know, I feel like the strength of our team, like I said earlier, is just going to be on our front eight guys. You know, we're a multiple eight man front on defense. So, we're going to try and, you know, stop the run and, and you know, be, uh, be, good enough in the secondary to, to hold our own. So, you know, that's – that's it's kind of old school. It's kind of – you know, people call it outdated. I can promise you this. I'm not the most popular guy in the world in Nashville on Friday nights, you know. So, um, but, you know, hey, it works for our team. And, and, you know, the biggest thing is – and and this is not – don't take this as I'm knocking anybody, but it's just what works for us. It may not work for everybody, and these guys believe that it works for them. You know, and, and that's the biggest thing is, you know, I don't have to sell our kids on running the football and trying to play a good defense. You know, they believe in that. Uh, Coach, I implanted myself with you guys first week last year, very special time, locker room, the whole nine. Went and ate with you guys. Your coaching staff, you've kept it intact, man. I know each one of you guys, Coach Lim, you know, uh, Nick, uh, Coach Hawk, all you guys. How important is that to keep all of those guys intact? And it's the same voices, the same message throughout and you ain't got to go move pieces around so to speak to, to make changes in off season. Well, I think the biggest thing is when you you know when you talk about okay, why is a program not doing maybe as well as they should have? Why why is it down? You know, you can look at things, you can look at a lot of things, but you know, we're in our third year of running the same offense. We're in our third year of running the same defense. You know, so there hasn't been a lot of change. So as you get further into your in your scheme, into your system, into your accountability, into your culture, so to speak, you know, these kids know what to expect from us. You know, there's no guessing game of, oh, well, what am I going to get today? Okay, you know, um, it just depends on what period of practice we're in, but I can be really, really fun to be around or I can be not so fun to be around. You know, uh, I wasn't very fun to be around in punt period yesterday. I'll just tell you that. But, you know, um, it's, it's a thing where, you know, I just think the consistency has, has been the, the biggest thing. Coach, uh, you know, I got to spend a – couple hours over there last week. And uh, first of all, I appreciate what you've done so far at Asheville. And everywhere you've been, you've done Thank a good you, job. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Uh, tell us a little bit about – I know you've talked about players and schedules and all that. Tell us a little bit about – and I was there, so I can remember being there 20 years ago, 25, in the facilities. Tell us a little bit about what you all have done this summer, some of your upgrades. And I know those upgrades in that weight room are exciting for you in, mm -hmm. in your future. But just tell us a little bit about what you've done upgrading wise your facilities and how that's going to help you out with this season? Well, our community's been top notch. And that's the thing I'll say about Asheville. The community is, is first class. They're great people and, and they're going to support these kids, um, whether they like me or not. You know, they're going to support these kids. So they deserve a lot of that credit. But, you know, I, I couldn't have done anything without Nick Wilson, who, who's really helped me, you know, helped me get involved with a lot of people. And, and you know, we've got some people in Asheville that are you know, very fortunate, and, and they've been, we've been fortunate enough to, you know, uh, benefit off that, you know, with our facilities, you know, we're, we're uh, getting our new lockers, I haven't even told the kids this yet, so surprise, guys, um, uh, your new lockers are coming in next week, so, um, you know, we're excited about that, and, and that's something that, you know, I hope our kids can take a lot of pride in, and, um, you know, people think, well, you're getting a new locker and that's not going to help you win. Well, it helps with pride, and pride helps you win. So, you know, that's – I don't know. Maybe that's – maybe I'm looking at it wrong, but that's just what I believe. But, you know, our community has been great. And, and uh, you know, like I said, new weight room and, uh, you know, team room being finished and, and locker room, man, it's just – it's a really exciting time, a time to be an Asheville Bulldog. Coach, thanks. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Good luck this year in thanks. 2022. Thanks, Jeff. Thank Appreciate you. it, guys. Thank you all.